My name is Samuel. I'm a first generation Christian. Hello, my name is Yong Song. I'm a second generation Christian. A first generation Christian would be someone who has done the searching within and also have made the choice to believe in the Christian faith. The second generation Christian is just a person who has been brought up in a Christian family and has been brought up in a Christian family and has been brought up in a Christian family and has been brought up. I was a Muslim since I was young. My worldview would be、uh, something like all other religions are false. And especially the Christian religion would be the more skewed and twisted、uh, version of the Muslim religion. So I struggle to believe、uh, of the concept of a scale where there are good deeds and sin, and that determines our placement in heaven or in hell.、Um, also, I struggle to understand the distant God that is never exactly present in our lives, where we could、um, experience Him or feel Him. The ritualistic prayers that we had did not bring about any、uh, form of experience that I can、uh, relate to a supernatural being. It is more like、uh, a ritual, so to say. As I'm still a Muslim, I felt that there is something beyond me and something greater than me that is out there. Well, actually, my most fighting is that I always think that God is only concerned with what is right and what is wrong. 因为父母总是灌输我，呃，基督徒的价值观，但是在成长的过程，我总是觉得，为什么这些是所谓的正确的事？为什么有一些就是成为，呃，就是罪呢？所以呢，当我有这些矛盾的时候，我其实不知道该，呃，如何是好。就例如说，当，呃，欧水主尿来的时候，我就觉得，为什么我需要去教会？虽然这个是正确的事。去教会是啊、呃、讨生喜悦的事，但是我总是不明白为什么我需要这么做。所以当这些选啊、呃、决定来的时候，我就会不知道该如何是好，也就很矛盾。对、yeah.。Do you what constitutes an encounter with Jesus? You know, like, cause I think many、uh, second gen Christians like myself, you know, when we、uh, we always believe that. If we have this key moment with Jesus, right,、mm. or this key experience with God, we will no longer doubt Him.、Mm. So,、okay. what constitutes an encounter?、Uh, firstly, I think an encounter with God, right, is very looks very different and feels very different for everyone. I think personally, for myself,、uh, an encounter with God would be、uh, those that you、um, really feel Him、uh, throughout your life's journey. Maybe big, maybe small, and especially those times where,、uh, for example, you have a like a bad situation, then suddenly it、uh, turns around to be a, a good one, right? That that happened miraculously. So that is actually, in fact, an encounter with God. And of course, I do not want to discount the the fact lah that people do encounter God in a more、uh, spectacular, in a spectacle manner lah.、Uh, an encounter with God. Doesn't necessarily always solidify and crystallize your faith. This this sort of encounter with God, when when the busyness and the complexity and the challenges of life come, right, we will forget one. Yeah, we will forget right, and then it will affect your faith. So it's not about like having that one. Then suddenly you are set for life, you know. Yeah, it is the every every day deep appreciation of the small small things、uh, that you encounter. So what are these small small things like? You will even constitute them as God's fingerprint or His steps. So、uh, I think throughout my journey will be that、um, I will always struggle with things like housing,、uh, finance, and also、um, emotional support, lah. Okay. So like for example,、um, finance will be something where I sometimes may not even have money to eat. But、uh, when I was living in、uh, New Caris,、uh, there were brothers who were like, "Hey, bring me out. Hey, come on, let's go for a nice meal." Then you know, suddenly like I have something nice to eat. Yeah,、uh, housing is such where like、uh, I was, I found myself、um, uh, desperately needing to find another accommodation within like what three weeks, and then another、uh, a friend of mine came like, "Hey,、uh, I spoke to my parents.、Uh, please lah,、like, you can stay at my house for a while." Yeah, that sort of thing. So I can I can see because it's beyond me. I cannot do anything. So, like I know God is there and God has orchestrated it lah. So I believe God、uh, through people, definitely, definitely through people, 
will work things in your life. Like? Well, there are times where, because uh, you talk a lot about people, right? Mm. And even like, uh, God providing material things. But were there times that you wanted something more where it's like, I don't know, it may be an experience. Cause like for, for second gen Christians, they are looking for things like, what wow, if God miraculously healed me or uh, God, uh, you know, I get an F9 today for math and the next day I get A1. Okay. Then that is God helping me. So okay. what, how would you say to them? What would you say to them? In, 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 that, in the examples, right? Uh, I think there is a kind of uh, expectation a person have to like experience this, then therefore God is real. Okay? If there's A, then this will link to B, okay, which is like God lah, okay? I think it, God don't work in this sort of uh, logical box kind of thinking. Lah. Definitely not. Lah. Uh, if he is then we just wish for something then come out lah, right? right? <laughs> And then everyone will believe. Huh? But I don't think it's like that. Um, for example, let's say you have an F9 for maths. There are definitely certain, certain fundamentals or concepts that you do not understand. If God gave you an A1 for maths, right, then you don't understand this fundamental, right? Then he is contradicting himself. He is not being good. Because he is just like giving you the grade, but then inside, right, is empty. Then you cannot solve the real life problems or the problems that is coming ahead of you. So I'm sure there are reasons which definitely sometimes I also cannot accept. Like, hey, why must like this? Why must like that? But we have to trust. We have to trust, which is the foundation of the faith. Lah. Of course, it's very difficult. Like, it may seem unfair. Like, every time you do something, then cannot. Then you pray, then cannot happen. But it is to build your character and your, your hunger. Lah. The reason why I ask, like, if you, you know, how do you determine whether is it God's fingerprint, God's footstep? Because, you know, sometimes, even for myself, I would think like, maybe it's just coincidence. Okay. So, what would you say? This kind of situation, where you have uh, experience, right, that you find it a coincidence, then it is something that is not important enough or not personal enough for you. Normally, where it will hit you, right, is where it is very personal and very deep inside you, where it is beyond you, that you cannot explain lah. Yeah. Then if it happens many, many times, then I don't think the coincidence happened many, 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 many times. Lah. I think that doubt, right, is a very powerful tool. It is not the tool from the enemy. It's actually from within. Because doubt actually propels you forward to want to... Uh, it's, it's like being very curious and you need uh, to have these questions to be answered for you to be satisfied. So you can actually, or everyone can actually use it, right? to push themselves and propel themselves forward to find out more about what is God. Then they can answer that doubt and that will really solidify their faith. So the point of conversion was when I genuinely felt uh, loved and cared by my close friends who were Christians. Um, they conducted themselves in a very respectable manner such where I felt intrigued and curious on why or what is it that they have and that I don't have. And so, needless to say, I then um, understood that it was actually um, their faith in God and the living God inside of them that made them different. I think that process was very uh, abrupt in a sense uh, because I think my curiosity uh, brought me deeper and deeper into it. After much searching and all this, I just felt a a strong desire to want to be in, in this community of uh, Christians. And what better more to identify with the community than to be one. The experience that stuck to me the most was when I, I kept on praying to ask God to show me His face. What, what does He look like? And the very strong answer that came from within is that you have my face. So I believe that this is something um, simple yet profound for me. I think we all as Christians have God's face. Of course, uh, God created um, humans in His image, right? Felt uh, a kind of change from deep within. I guess I stopped uh, all my bad habits such as like smoking, um, swearing, and even I uh, do not wish to want to uh, do um, sins in, in a sense. Yeah. So normally, if you feel that there is a doubt, how do you um, address it? 
so for me when I when I doubt I always go back to uh, prayer I think what you mentioned you know don't stop at doubt right so for me I would pray to not just pray and just stop there but to go and ask uh, people that who have gone ahead of me so mm. like go and look mm. for my mentors go mm. and look for my uh, pastors and ask them you know I'm facing this you know what can I do about it and oftentimes you know they will be there to encourage you to see beyond the situation but to look at God's word and to, to hold on to the faith huh? like, okay. and they would always say you know look how far you have come and just continue to press on and believe that God will come true for you okay suppose if they are not present in your life for whatever reason how would you then settle those doubts I think it will be a difficult process but I think I will still uh, hold on to God's word now because that's the thing mm. I know best so I think for me I would just pray mm. and I would hold on to God and I just say you know uh, regardless of what is going to happen I'm going to trust based on what you have said mm. already in mm. the Bible mm. and I'm sure through that then you will be a much stronger and more formidable Christian right? do you feel that you are um, forced to be a Christian because you are a second gen Christian by your parents? I don't think I'm being forced to be a Christian. Okay. I think what was lacking was not even uh, whether they forced me to accept Christianity but uh, why accept Christianity okay. and why, uh, why uh, allow Jesus into your life and uh, why have a relationship with Him. That's something I only uh, realised that I needed when I become older. Okay, okay. Perhaps that is too complex for a young child to understand why you should accept a religion, do you think? I guess it is complex. That's why uh, since young, your parents will need to tell you, uh, you know, this is what our family believes and uh, because you are in my family, uh, this is our culture and that's why uh, you should believe in the God we believe in. Uh, I think that is also what creates a community identity like within your household that's how you want to identify as, as a, a family of God okay. but I think even when we want to train our children to be godly we also need to show them that hey there's a God and uh, He wants to build a relationship with you He really loves you and He really cares for you and that's why you want to walk in His ways because uh, the ways brings uh, blessing then do you think that uh, Christian parents should allow their children to uh, pick their own religion? I think ultimately, uh, whether parents allow their children to pick their own religion, that's secondary in the sense whereby ultimately, when it comes to your own faith and your own uh, religion, you really need to make uh, their own choice uh, yourself. Even if you can tell your parents, hey, I'm, I'm a Christian, I really believe in God, but if at the end of the day, uh, you said, I believe in Jesus, but your heart, you don't really believe in Jesus or you don't believe in the religion that you really subscribe to, mm. it doesn't matter what your parents say. Ultimately, you will still uh, go your own way that you deem is right. How much will the love of God is the love of God or the love of God is the love of God? I remember when I was in the house, 其实当遇到困难的时候也感受到就是有一股热流而且会感觉到鸡皮疙瘩所以我相信在那个时候我真的感受到神的同在也感受到神的安慰也因此能够面对以后的日子 What about you? Because you have left the Muslim faith Like you know what was the process for you? How were your parents feeling at that point in time? And how you deal with all of that? Okay uh, I'd say I'd I didn't deal with it well, uh, personally, lah, because I think I was uh, being left uh, alone. Lah, you know? It's like being exiled yeah, from my family. I have already made the decision 
to become a Christian. My parents were definitely devastated. Uh, they, in fact, uh, was that uh, didn't want to talk to me, or my dad didn't even regard me as the child anymore. Um, and all this is it, it comes from a deep sense of disappointment lah for them. Yeah, which which I didn't understand back then, but maybe now as I look back into it, I understood. At that moment, it was very very difficult. But as time goes by, uh, it gets better because um, I get more mature. I um, I get more wise. I hope, and so that I can understand this sort of uh, situation better, lah. Uh, it gives me a deeper sense of appreciation, lah, now of them being my parents, lah. Even though we are um, like totally separated, lah, in in all in all aspects, lah. Actually, can I say? Actually, I think you are really very courageous. I, oh, thank you very much. Because yeah. <laughs> I think. If I were put in that kind of shoes, I think I may not even go with my decision and to say, you know, uh, to just uh, leave the family. And so I really think that's really uh, a step of faith that I think not many will take. Mm. And I'm really uh, very amazed with your courage. Uh. Thanks, man. Yeah. I I also don't know why I decided to just move forward, lah. Like you mentioned, there's always the option of going backwards. But I felt that I I think it's too good, lah. Like uh, when you really tasted the honey, you know how nice and sweet it is. So I wanted more of it, lah. I I felt that um, it is the right thing to do, and I should take on the responsibilities or the anything that comes with it, lah. I, I kind of developed this thought lah when I was uh, out there on my own. That yeah, actually you know, um, if my parents want to throw me out because of the decision I made, they have every right because I have done nothing to deserve their house and their care. Actually, yeah, I just like appear onto the world, lah, right? <laughs> so my prayer and desire for my family definitely is for them to 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 know this the the real creator lah. I'm sure. I'm sure, everyone has uh, like a spirit man inside of them that is longing for something greater than them, than themselves. So I, I I hope and I pray that they can achieve that lah. That belief lah, it got in your own special way. Yeah. You know when you were first introduced uh, to the Christian community, like mm. uh, how was it for you? Do you feel awkward like coming to a church mm. service and? Were you integrated well into the body of Christ? I think it was a really awkward experience, lah. Surely, lah. I think everyone, right, come to church is surely awkward because uh, Christians sing to worship God, sing and dance and uh, all the creative ministries, lah, right? So this is uh, very unusual for a lot of other religions because they follow a ritual, a certain. Uh, steps to do uh, certain positions that they assume, physical positions that they assume, in order to gain the closeness to God, lah. But then Christians more free flow, lah. You know <laughs> how you feel and personally how it will help you to uh, attain the closeness to God, lah. Right. So it's definitely very weird. But slowly, I uh, thankfully I have adapted, lah. I think um, I have integrated well and I have. Not integrated well at the same time. So yes and no. Um, I've integrated well because I think the church is very um, strong and firm in the um, spiritual aspect, such where um, like you come to church, then you have a close group of friends, then you go to a cell group, and then the cell group leader will sort of like uh, impart knowledge and uh, also uh, do more Bible reading and. Deepen your knowledge uh, in God, lah, in that sense. So the spiritual aspects is where I have integrated well. So one that is not well is that um, I cannot kid myself that I'm different. I'm of a different race. I look different. I speak different, and I walk different, maybe also. And I have different uh, needs, lah, at the moment, especially during the early early years of my uh, Christian walk, lah, such as uh, emotional needs. Uh, financial support and also housing, lah. So these sort of things. So these sort of things are perhaps if the churches would want to evangelize to people of different races and religions, even or if in different countries, right? These are the things where they need to look into, lah. Because uh, it's not a done deal, like oh, you just you know you 
but this person accepts Christianity, then I'll settle it. My job is done. No lah, it's not. It is it is more than that lah. It is the follow up. It is the walking sideways. It is the hand holding uh, and probably even opening your house to have this person to stay for for a while, uh, for even years maybe sometimes. Yeah, that sort of thing. So we have to be prepared lah. It's sad to say, but sometimes maybe uh, we want to bring people to Christ is because we want to. Uh, look good in front of our pastors. We want to look good in front of our leaders. Hey, I bring okay. someone to uh, to church, and they eventually became a Christian. And mm. how uh, that's because of me. And uh, you know, without me, they will not even come to church. And they, in a way, they have gotten the glory, and that's why they. Uh, after that, then they will think that it's none of my business anymore. Which I think it's a very sad thing. What we really want is not someone to just convert but to really be a disciple and to really understand mm. uh, God's love for them through whether is it through the many things like financial support emotional support I think when someone just accepted Christ it's so important to let them know that uh, God is really for you He really loves you and how uh, He wants to provide for all your needs mm. so I think uh, it's not just getting people to convert but to really disciple them to walk in the ways of God. For me, the biggest similarity would be whether you are a first-gen or a second-gen Christian, I think ultimately it boils down to having an encounter with God. And I think that encounter is not just a miraculous thing that happened, like a big thing, but it's always the uh, small little things like you mentioned, like how you see everything with God's fingerprint and God's step, right? I think for whether you are Christian or a, a first gen or a second gen, you always need to have that encounter with God like every, uh, every day of your life and to really uh, experience Him so that you can be more assured of your faith and how because you have tasted the real deal and that's why you, you hold on to your faith. Hmm. For me, I see the similarities is that we are all under the same banner, lah, right? If we have the word Christian behind first gen or second gen, it doesn't matter. Lah. Christians means that we believe in the Christian faith to want to please God because we, we like to lah, and we, we, we love to, lah, right? So I, I believe that is, that is the similarity. Lah. I, see, I see that all across. Lah. Doesn't matter the levels like or whether you are like like a pastoral level or whatever, I think it doesn't matter. Lah. We are all being the type of person God wants us to be and we, we, we see that and we acknowledge that and we, we embrace that. Lah. Um, the difference is, I actually don't see any difference. Lah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's any difference. People would say like, oh, maybe the level of maturity or the exposure to certain things like hardships and all these are different. But I think pe everyone have their own purpose. Lah. There's no need to like, oh, you must go through a hardship, then you'll be a better Christian. I don't think so. If you have to do that, right, then then again, God is in the, the confirmational system. We cannot put God in that box. Yeah. Yeah. God will like will act as how He would deem necessary at that point of time, lah, which we all cannot say. I think for me, the only difference I can I could think of is just how you first hear the word Jesus. Like maybe for a second gen, you hear the word Jesus when you are young when your mm. parents talk to you about the faith. But I think for a first gen, you heard it through your friends, you mm. heard it through, maybe you even seen some videos about Christianity through social media. So I think that's the only difference I can uh, think of. La. 第一代和第二代基督徒对你来说,真的是同一个世界的人吗? 同样的我们在描述栏的description 下面呢有一些的问题希望可以帮助到你能够更深的走入彼此的世界当然不要忘记点赞而且要订阅我们的频道哦按一下嘛都跟你说了不会后悔的好下个星期四晚上八点半锁